Hi everybody, welcome back. So a while back when I was browsing one of the Chinese retailers looking for 3D printing parts, I ran across one of these. And um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is the DSO-138 mini oscilloscope. About a two and a half inch screen, something like that. Doesn't have a whole lot of functionality, but enough for small hobbyist type projects. But that's not the point of this video. I thought I was getting a kit. I think I paid 15 bucks for this. And I wish I had got the kit because whatever sloppy guy in China or sloppy person in China soldered this together, put the screen on really crooked, and I think I could have done better, but uh, I'm going to learn to live with it. But anyway, this isn't about the DSO-138 oscilloscope. There is a boatload of video on those. This is about my search for a case to 3D print and put it in, and I'm going to probably be doing another video about the case and getting it all mounted. If for no other reason, then um, I'm kind of going to do it a little bit differently than I've seen it done so far. But I found a case on Thingiverse that's not only a case that will work really well for me, but showcase is a very interesting technique, which even after three years of digging around and fooling around in Cura, I had never run into before, and that's how to highlight your text with a different color border while you're 3D printing. And the technique he outlines is in Cura. It can probably be done in other slicers as well. But um, let's take a look at the case and let's take a look at what he said. And I'll show you how to do it and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so here is the case over at Thingiverse. This is a remix of a previous case. The remix is by Steak Sandwich. You can see the original one down here. It doesn't have their username in there, but this is just a little case for the DSO-138. And what Steak Sandwich did was he extended it out one side enough to get a 9-volt battery in it. This original one, you had to use an external power supply. So anyway, he also has this technique to make this really neat looking outline font. So let's see what he says on how to do it, because he gives us a technique of how he did it. He says, if you want to have the labeling outlined like I do, process in Cura, place everything in Cura, slice it with 0.2 millimeter layer, first layer 0.3, and then save that. Save that G code. And this first, the first part he's giving you here you're going to print that last. So I think I saved that with the 0.3 initial layer height and I called that next or last or something like that. Then once you've saved that, now he says without moving objects, change the first layer height to 0.2. So you're going to have a 0.2 layer and a 0.2 initial layer. You would change it to 0.3, but now we're going to change it back to 0.2. And he says, then change special modes, surface mode to surface. And as I said, I think surface will not be visible. That, that mode will not be visible. You have to go in and change it and I'll show you how to do it. He says, this will print only the outer walls. Then he says, print the first layer and stop the print afterwards. And I put in a little post-processing G code to automatically pause it there. I'll show you that too. He says, but keep the bed heated if you use one. I didn't bother keeping the bed heated. He says, now you can with a sharp blade and steady hands, remove drips and ooze. I didn't spend too much time at it like you can see. I didn't do it at all. I left it exactly the way it was. He says, also remove all outlines you don't want to be highlighted. And for me personally, all I removed was a skirt. After change, and we're going to save that, what we just did in surface mode. And I called that first. He says, after changing your filament to your desired color, just start the normal print. The first layer will print over the outlines and you get the labeling nice and neat. So what he's saying is the second part of this, where you print the first layer and stop it, we're going to print that part first. And then after we have that printed and we've stopped it after layer number one, we're going to come back and we're going to get that first one that I saved as next or last. I know it's confusing, isn't it? That we sliced with the 0.3 initial layer height and we're going to start that like a brand new print. I like the like what's on the bed now with the outline of the text isn't even there at all. And when I first did it, I thought, well, yeah, the nozzle is going to hit that and knock it loose, isn't it? But it didn't. So, so I would say suggest you use a method with good adhesion. So there's no chance of that. But um, let's pop over to Cura and let's take a look at it. I got Cura down here, I think. Okay. 
And um, so here's the, here's the part in question. And it comes when you when you first load it in. It comes here. Let me just Control Z it. Control Z. It comes. It loads in face up like this. There's all the text we want highlighted, and of course we need to rotate it. So we're going to come back, click on it, and do rotate. We're going to rotate it because we need that text face down for this to work. I think I've had too many cups of coffee today. My hands are a little jittery. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to change, and, and this is just a 0.2 layer height with a 0.5 line with standard PLA setting for Cura. We're going to change that initial layer height to 0.3. We're going to leave the layer height at 0.2, but change the initial layer height to 0.3. Three. Now you can use whatever line width you want. I like 0.5, but you can leave it to 0.4 or 0.38 or 0.42, whatever you like. I don't think it matters. All the rest of these settings for your for whatever you normally use for PLA, you can leave alone. I wanted the box extra sturdy, so I went ahead with some looking for about a one a one millimeter wall thickness and top and bottom thickness. So anyway. That's what I did here. Uh, I left infill density at 20% because I'm not worried about that with as many with as many um, walls and surfaces as I have. Print temperature I left normal. Now where you where the change is, you need this under special mode surface mode to be visible. And to get that, you can just come into here and in settings visibility, type in surface. Oops, spelled it wrong. And then come down and find special modes, surface mode, and make sure you have a check mark in there. And then close the window. Now you will see this surface mode under under special modes. So for this one, we're going to leave this just set to normal, and we're going to but we and we're going to slice it, and we're going to save this one. And I'm doing this in the order he gave it, which is kind of backwards. This is the second print you're going to do. Save it, call it next, last, second, whatever you want, just so you know. This is the second half of this process. Then when you get this done, what we're going to do is we're going to come up. We're going to change our initial layer height to 0.2. And we're going to come down. And all we're going to do is change surface mode to surface. And now what he's suggesting that we do is stop it after the very first layer. Now, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'll mess it up. I'll forget it. I'll hit it at the wrong moment, whatever. So I just put in a simple post-processing G-code to, to pause it after layer height one. And to do that, you just come up to extensions and post-processing, modify G-code, click add a script, and pick pause at height. And you can pause at a height number. You could put in pause at height point, uh, point 0.2. Or you can put in pause at layer number and put in 1 for the layer, which is what I did. Uh, I think I initially did 2 and it printed 2 layers. I thought it was going to pause in between 1 and 2, but it didn't. So if you want it to pause after a layer number, put in the layer number. Does that make sense? I want it to pause at layer one, so I'm putting one in. Anyway, <laughs> with that being done, um, pick some place where you want the head to go. I wanted it to come somewhere near home. They have it going near the back corner. So I put in 10 and 10 to get it to come somewhere near home. And you can put in some retraction if you want. You can change a whole bunch of different stuff. But all I really wanted it to do was pause it. So, because all I'm going to do after it pauses, I'm just going to switch the printer off or stop the print. In whatever way, I just switch the printer off. So, we're going to close that. Now, you see this little icon we have down here. That signifies that we have a post-processing script in place. And now, and I changed it back to point 0.2, right? So, now we're going to slice this. And now, let's just for sport and amusement, let's go to preview and let's come down to layer one and let's see what we're going to get after layer one. This is what it's going to print. So we're going to save this and we're going to call this first because this is what you want to print first. So I've already saved all these and I've printed them and I have some results and I have some little, some little, um, Fast action print. We'll watch a little bit of that, but I promise I won't bug you with much of it. And um, we'll take a look at it.
Okay, I have the red Polyterra PLA. It's going to be the outline of my part loaded in. Let's, um, let's print it and see what we get. Okay, so I got my pause at layer one. I don't know if you can see it over here on the screen, but it says click to resume. I'm just going to switch the printer off. And let's slide it out and let's have a look at it. So, see if I can zoom down on it. Boy, the um, the mirror bed with the almost perfectly clear hairspray on it really gives a good idea what this is going to look like. So, there's what I have. I am going to take the skirt off of it and I'm just going to leave the rest alone. Then I am going to load in the blue polyterra filament and I am now then going to print the entire part over top of this. Obviously without the skirt and without this little extra line. You can't see it there. The prime line it draws down. And I'm not going to bother you with another time lapse. I will just come back and show you the results. Okay, so here is our final part, and um, it did print really nicely. It is a really sturdy part, which is what I wanted. And for the record, I did print both of this, the red and the blue, in the Polymaker Polyterra PLA. And um, I believe my coupon code if for the coupon code of Chuck for 10% off is still good if you want to go over to Polymaker's website and purchase some of this nice PLA for yourself. So let's take a look at the text, how it turned out. And I have to admit, for a first attempt at this technique, even though I was following somebody else's instructions, it turned out really well. I lost a little bit of the S down here in the SEL, and some of the smaller text is a little on the blurry side, but I think a lot of that has to do with my, um, my 0.5 line width. If I drop down to 0.35, that would probably be quite a bit clearer, I think, anyway. I'm not going to make another one because this one is perfect for my for my needs and that sure beats the heck out of me painting it because on a scale of 1 to 10 as a painter even on a good day I'm lucky to hit 5. Painting is not my thing so this is really excellent for me thanks to Steak Sandwich for the case that's going to fit with my 9 volt battery and for the great tech idea the technique of how to make the different color text and um, thanks to Polymaker for the great Polyterra PLA filament that's a little bit less rigid and tougher than regular PLA. And thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And um, I'll catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.